Now let's talk a little bit about shell variables. But before doing this, let me just introduce a very simple command to you. And this command is called echo. So if, for example, I type um, echo hello world, then it will just display hello world to the screen, right? So this command basically just displays its argument um, to the screen, right? Um, you can also write it this way. Okay. Now let me just create a variable called first name. To do this, I just type first name equals, for example, Bob, right? So here we created a variable called first name, and the content of this variable is Bob. So if I display the content of this variable, so we need to do echo first name. If you don't, if you just do this echo first name, then it will just display first name, right? Um, because as we saw here, so echo hello world, it just displays hello world. So if we want to display the content of the variable called first name, so we want to display basically Bob, then you need to use this dollar sign here, right? So when you do dollar sign before the name of the variable, this means that you want to access the content of this variable, right? So in this case, it will display Bob, right? So we are displaying to the screen what the content of the variable first name, okay? Um, but when you modify the variable or you create it, you don't need to use the dollar sign, right? You just do this, okay? So a variable just stores some information. And such information can be used later to modify, um, for example, the functionality of the shell or the functionality of some other comments. Now let's see what happens if we try to display the content of some variable that, that doesn't exist. So for example, if I type echo and then let's say some variable ABC, which doesn't exist because I didn't create it, then nothing will be displayed, right? But if I create first the variable ABC and I put something in it, for example, let's say, hello world, right, like this. Um, since I have two words here uh, separated by a space, I need to use those double quotes, right? Okay, so now if we display the content of the variable ABC, it will be hello world, right? So these are examples of variables that we created, right? But there are also some variables called environment variables, right? They exist by default on your system. So let's see some examples of such environment variables. Um, one of those variables is called shell. For example, so echo shell. And those environment variables, they are usually um, in capital letters like this, right? So if we display the content of a variable shell, then this variable contains the current shell that you are using. There is another variable, environment variable called name. It just displays the host name, right? It contains the host name. Um, there is a variable called user it contains the current user, right? In this case, uh, Rafik. There is a variable, environment variable called home. It contains your home directory, right? So the home directory of the current user. And these variables, they, they exist by default. We didn't create them, right? And as I said, they are usually in capital letters. There is another variable called, or environment variable, called hist size. And this actually contains the size of the history um, that will be displayed when you use the history command, right? So if I type history, um, the number of comments in this history that will be displayed is 1000, right? So if now I modify the content of this environment variable called hist size, and let's set it to, for example, just six, right? Now, if you display it, yeah, this variable contains six, right? 
And this actually modifies how the history command works, right? So by default now, history, if I don't give it any arguments, right? History will by default display six, um, six comments from the history, right? So these are the list, the, the six last comments that I typed. And just as a side note, um, the variables that you create, they are just temporary, right? Um, even the changes that you do to, um, let's say, environment variables, these changes are, are temporary, right? So if you log out and log in again, then you'll see that um, this change disappears, right? It, it will, um, so for example, his size will, will contain the default value of 1000 um, again, right? So if you want those changes to be permanent, then instead of just writing them here, instead of writing a command like this here, you write it instead in a specific file called um, bash rc. Um, and it's in your home directory. So if we check the content of our home directory uh, using the minus a option, you'll see that there is a hidden file called bash rc, this one, right? So this file just contains comments that are executed each time you log in, right? Um, so if you want some change like like this one to be permanent, then you just do it in this file, right? So any comment that you put in this file will, will be re-executed each time you log in again. So if you put his size um, equals 6 into this file, then his size equals six will be executed each time, right? So the change will be kind of permanent. Okay, there is another environment variable called path. So let's just display it. So echo path. So the variable path contains some path names like this, 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 and so on. And they are separated by those double dots, right? And this environment variable path allows the system to determine where comments are executed from. So actually each comment corresponds to, to a file. So for example, the ls command, right? You know, the ls command corresponds to, there is a file that corresponds to this command. So if you type which ls, it allows you to, to display um, where this file is. So there is a file within the slash user slash bin slash ls. There is this file, right? Which corresponds to the ls command. So whenever you execute the ls command, the system knows that it is within this directory, right? So it is executed. And that's why it knows where to find the ls command when, when you type it, right? So it goes through those, those path names in the path variable one by one until it finds the one which contains ls and it is executed, right? And we can actually modify the content of this variable path. Um, so let me display it again. So if we want to modify the content of the variable path, we do the same thing as previously. So path equals something new, right? But we don't want to overwrite the content of this file. We don't want to, let's say we want to add our home directory to this, um, to this variable, right? So slash home, slash Rafiq, for example. If we do this, then we are replacing the content of the path variable with this new content, right? So let me just show you this. So if you do this, then the content will be will be the new value or the new content that you give it here, right? So we lose the previous, all the previous content. Now that's not a problem because we said that this change is just temporary. If I log out and then log in again, then um, this will be fine. So um, if I log out and then I log in again, then if I check the content of this variable, well, it is back to its default value, right? Now, if I want to add this path 
to my um, to my path variable, right? Then I can do this. So two dots here and then dollar path. So dollar path is the content of the path variable. So it's basically all this, right? And what I am saying here is the new content of the path variable is this path and then two dots and then all this, right? The previous content, okay? So if we do this, and then I display the content of this path variable, we will see that at the beginning here, you will see um, this additional path that we added, right? So we have this new path name that we added, my home directory, and then the previous content, okay? Now let me show you an example. So in my home directory, there is a directory called documents, and let's list the content of this directory. It contains an executable file called say hi. So if you if you execute this file, it will just display hello or yeah hi everyone, right? Um, now if I just try to execute it, now I'm in my home directory, right? I'm not in this documents directory, right? But the, this file is inside the documents directory. So if I just type say hi like this, well, I will get an error. So the comment is not found. There is no such comment called say hi, right? And the reason for this is because the system doesn't know that it needs to search for this comment within the, the documents directory. But if I add the documents directory to my path, then it will know where to find this say hi command. So let's do this. So if I do this and then I add the documents directory to my path variable. So now if I display the content of this path variable, you'll see that it contains this folder or directory called um, documents, right? So now if I type say hi, the system knows where to find this command, right? Because there is a path to the document to the to this folder documents that contains this command. Okay. Um, so yeah, it is executed. Okay. Yeah. So now if you type um, which say hi, then the system knows where to find this command, right? So it is inside this directory because this directory is within our path variable, okay? Now, the next thing I wanted to briefly talk about is aliases. An alias just allows you to, um, or aliases are used to make shortcuts for longer comments, right? So if you have a comment which has a very long um, format, right? It's a very long comment then you can create a short name for this command. And the way to do this is to use the command called alias, right? So if I just do alias, and then I give a name to some command, for example, um, before doing this, let me just show you that there is no command called, for example, LSA, right? So if you just type LSA, command not found, right? Now let's create it, or let's create an alias called LSA. The way to do this is just to do alias LSA equals, and then here you type whatever command you want, right? So if I, for example, do LS minus A, for example, or whatever, right? Then I have created an alias called LSA, and each time I type LSA, this command will be executed. Right, so now if you type LSA, then LS minus A will be executed, okay? Another example, so for example, there is no command called hey, right? So command not found. So let's just create an alias called hey, right? So the way to do this again is just to do alias, and then let's call it hey equals, and then we can use this double quotes, right? Then let's say, for example, um, echo, hello, and welcome to everyone, for example. Now, if I type hey, yeah, 
this will be executed, right? It will display, um, it will execute this command, right? So it will display hello and welcome to everyone. We will discuss more about aliases and something similar called functions later in the course. Um, but just like variables, if you create an alias like this, right, then this will be just a temporary alias. So if you log out and then log in again, um, this alias will not exist anymore, right? So if you want to make it permanent, or if you want this alias to be uh, created each time you log in, then you just put it within the bash rc uh, file, right? Within this file, okay? So if you put this command within this file, then this command will be executed each time you log in, right? So this alias will, will exist always. Let's maybe take a final example of an alias. Um, so let's create an alias called um, um, let's say, well, whatever, ABC, for example. And then let's say, for example, that we want two comments. We want first to display with echo, we want to display um, this sentence. So the content of documents is, so this is what we want to display. And then second comment, so we use the semicolon to add another command, right? So let's say ls and then my home directory slash documents. Okay, so we create this alias. Now, whenever we write, we type abc, we execute this abc, all this will be executed. So first, the echo command will be executed, this first one. And then this command will be executed. Okay, so if I type ABC, we will see the content of documents is those two files, right? And this is the actual content of, of um, documents, right? Okay, so what you need to remember from all this is how to create a variable, let's say ABC equals whatever. Right? How to display the content of a variable. Don't forget this dollar sign to access the content of the variable. We don't use the dollar sign when we create a variable. Right? Um, there are also environment variables, right? like for example, the home variable. Right? Uh, they exist by default. And also you need to remember how to use an alias. Right? Um, you give it a name and then some, some comment. Right. For example, something like this. So now each time I type name, all this will be executed. Okay.